What's, What's going up, on, cowards? you cowards? <laughs> <laughs> we get it wrong every time. We'll get it right one day. <laughs> Just not today. <laughs> so our lovely producer has um, decided to compile a list of, I think, I don't even know what website these are posted on, but a list of um, of hate threads. Basically, we get a lot of flack because we were villains on the TV show and we're here to show you guys that maybe you're not wrong. <laughs> and our producer- We're validating your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> our producer has very kindly compiled a list of all the hatred that you back home have put out onto the kindly, internet. Kindly put together for us. <laughs> <laughs> for us to read and kind of give you guys our thoughts and opinions on it. So without further ado, Trent, would you like to read the first post? I would love to. I would be honoured to hear those words leave your lips. And just for the listeners at home, we actually haven't read any of this yet. We have been pretty good at abstaining from what we're about to see. We hate speculation <laughs> it's out there, but... Well, when we get DMs, normally we just it's just as simple as not reading it, you know? And if you get a comment, you just block <laughs> the commenter. <laughs> this is a ripper. Okay, I'm just going to read the top part. All right. Okay. So the... The headline is Trent and Zach are the worst duo in Love Island history. What an amazing label to have. Thank you, guys. Guys. (laughs) (laughs) That's fun for the history books. (laughs) Okay. And then it goes, and it's got like red highlighted, which is awesome. I just can't let this go. Trent and Zach were the ones hyping Reed up when he was going from bombshell to bombshell. They were legitimately in hysterics, putting him on a pedestal for it, especially when it came to Kira. They found it so hilarious. Yet when the girls are confused slash indecisive, they are labelled crazy and game players. I genuinely don't think there's ever been a more misogynistic pair of islanders. The misogyny isn't even subtle either. They are fully fledged public misogynists. <laughs> <laughs> public misogynist. What is it? What's, it, what's to- a closet misogynist? <laughs> <laughs> a closet misogynist needs to come out of the clo- closet <laughs> and be. Well, it's a bit hard to not be a public misogynist when it's on national TV. Well, not only that, but it's like it said we were labeling the girls that were indecisive game players. There's only one person who wasn't decisive, and she was kissing multiple boys at the same time. Hence the label. <laughs> it's not because we hate women. We call a pencil a pencil, guys. I, I don't love know what women. you guys call a pencil, yeah. but these guys on this thread would probably call it a car. Yeah. <laughs> You guys need to read between the lines. We love women. We were born from the loins of a woman. From the gusset. Straight from the gusset. We are blessed because of it. <laughs> no, but what the heck? How does that make us the worst, most misogynic pe- misogynistic people ever? Yeah. Read playing a game. Come on, guys. Hilarious. <laughs> it's not because he was hurting girls that it was hilarious. It was yeah. hilarious because... He's an idiot. He was an actor. Like, we were laughing at his acting skills. Yeah, we skills. were laughing at how ridiculous he sounded and being he was, such a liar. But he was such a good actor as well. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have fooled me if I was a girl. He deserves a golden logie. But it's not, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. This is consuming people's lives, Zach. I can't believe that. What do you guys do for a living? All right, so let's go through some of the comments that have been attached to this. Just so we can see what the consensus is. So I think this post got quite a few likes. Here's a comment. I loved them and their bromance. I cried when Trent left and Zach was upset about it. Hey, I cried too. <laughs> <laughs> Could never cry for Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Okay, that's that, not very nice. And that got four up likes. Who's Tweedledee and Tweedledum? I don't know which one's which, but it's definitely is that like us. A, <laughs> is that a cartoon or is that like a fictional character? Um... Our producers just told us it's from Alice in Wonderland. And you know what? That's a fantasy television program. That's a famous TV program. We're famous, Zach. (laughs) No, no, but it's fantasy. (laughs) Therefore, reinforcing my point that these people are living in fantasy land, okay? Yep, they are horrible. It's not just Zach who hates Nate. Trent is also cowardly. Oh, sorry. Outwardly cold to him and thinks low of him. I honestly hate watching them. I'm not done with the season, but I don't know how so many of the girls wanted to get to know Trent, and I have no words for Lucinda. <laughs> it gets worse, doesn't it? I'm in the villain era of the show, and perhaps the last week of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just unpack that. Let's just I'm take ju- a second to unpack that. So I'm just on that now. So It's not just Zach who hates Nate. Trent is also outwardly cold to him. 
and thinks lowly of him. What do you have to say about that? Are these guys that? watching the same show? I just don't understand what people don't seem to get about when you're competing for someone, you're not going to be like patting your your competition on the back. I'm not going to be wig meeting my competition. Yeah, hey, he's such a hey, great guy. Kiss him, man. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> Why would you kiss me? No, 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 no. I don't want to share the bed with you. You go <laughs> share the bed with him. <laughs> like what the heck? It's time that you imbeciles started to the, this take is, a look at the reality of the situation. We didn't go on a dating show to make guy friends. Why are these commenters watching a dating show if they're not watching it for competition? Yeah. Yeah. What What do you want to watch? Like, I, I don't get it. Let's give everyone a participation badge. I think these guys uh, need to start watching MasterChef. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? So, something a bit more user-friendly for them. MasterChef's brutal, man. Come on. This guy's going through it. I've never seen MasterChef. All right, so there's another comment on here that I've just found on this same thread. You can blame them, but blame the moronic producers for accepting, encouraging, and allowing that sort of behavior. And most importantly, selecting for that behavior in their screening process. Evidently, they learn nothing from season one with Erin and Eden. First of all, they should probably get a pay rise because <laughs> look at you morons talking about us at home in your spare time. <laughs> I think they've done exactly what they set out to do. <laughs> Thank you guys for making this show the most successful one in Love Island Australia history. Well, actually, behind season one, it was the most successful Love Island and Australia. And that's thanks, that's thanks to these guys in this thread. So. so it's interesting, though, because they've said they've obviously learned nothing from season one, Erin and Eden. Comparing us to them, but it's the second most successful season after Erin and Eden. It's all... You guys need to use your that's brains simple math. Put one and one together. That's yeah. two, okay? <laughs> Don't make me write it out for you. <laughs> oh. oh, that's hilarious. All right, so let's go through some of these other posts that we've been sent through. And let's just have a see what the community thinks of us. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I actually don't think we're that bad as people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this one literally just says Zach makes me uncomfortable <laughs> hey guys he makes me uncomfortable too <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean <laughs> mate here we go are Let's... you, you going on to that one yeah yeah I'm reading some of the comments <laughs> Zach and Trent both made me so uncomfortable obviously Zach's the dominant partner in their relationship hell yeah Trent, he's top <laughs> Trent is faithful psychic. he's the top guys the sexual energy between them is far stronger than Zach and Lucinda Zach is scary on so many levels shudder <laughs> <laughs> roar, X, roar XD <laughs> the sexual energy what the heck even is that because I can feel it it might be <laughs> <laughs> This is, it's actually just crazy, the, the things people are writing. I just kind of have to say, though, some of these things do feel good to read because it's like, I didn't realise, you know when you hear conspiracy theories online and yeah. you're like, that's got some truth to it. When you read stuff online and it's about you and there's like an element of truth, and then you just see how wild they go with it. it, it is, yeah. Like there's more sexual energy but between you and the girl that I was <laughs> <laughs> seen and sleeping with every night. <laughs> well, am I missing something? Did you, did you do something to me while I was asleep? You were asleep. Um, <laughs> it's, it's honestly crazy, but I love reading this back, knowing that people spent so much time on you and I. Like, That's crazy. Were these guys talking about people that were good on the show? These are so crazy. None of them are nice. I sense some very dark energy in him. <laughs> I've been working in the dark arts for a while, actually, and practicing my black magic. Hey, Trent. <laughs> We've been practicing nightly. He's trash. Nate is a way more patient man than I am. You know, I will go ahead and say Nate is a very, very patient man. On camera. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see everything. <laughs> Nate has a shorter fuse than oh, me. Oh, I've got a river Nate's got a shorter fuse than me, but he like he did put up with a lot of crap. Credit where it's due. This dude gives Kiwis a bad name. I don't know WTF he's talking about, saying that's normal behavior, throwing your boys under the bus to chat up a girl here. But that's not how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> that guy must be from the slums of New Zealand because <laughs> where I'm from, it's completely there. acceptable to do what you got to do to get a girl. <laughs> and the, the fact that these guys, like this guy's username is Lucker McDog. 
<laughs> Whoa, come on, buddy. <laughs> yeah, stay in your lane, Lucka McDonald. What did he say? Wait, wait I want to find that. <laughs> on behalf of all Kiwis, we do not claim Zach as one of our own. We are so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I got the hell out of that place? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hey. be associated with you. <laughs> hey, us in Australia claim him now, so. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> Up yours. <laughs> that just reminds me of that scene from Transformers. It's a guy, one man, betrayed by the country he loved. <laughs> hey, did you put that? I've been betrayed by the country I loved. I've been isolated. You know, nah, but to be fair, whenever someone says something along those lines, I'm a proud Australian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of hiding it. Proud <laughs> Australian who's working on his UK citizenship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a river. All right, First wait. comment off the bat. Trent has a loose screw for sure. When he speaks, something's just so missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can probably agree with that. That's wait, probably the first comment this? I wait, agree wait. with. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> they are so are both so mid. Like, who finds these man-children attractive? To be fair, on the scale of looks in the world, I would honestly rate myself a 10. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sick of hiding it. Trent, you're a 10 too. Everyone's 10s. <laughs> no, but obviously there's better looking people out there. Come on, there's always a bigger fish, you know? Um, it's about what's inside your there's heart. There's always a bigger matters. fish, but none bigger than us. <laughs> It's about what's on the inside. And clearly, <laughs> you suck on the inside as well, buddy. <laughs> Zach is the worst. OMFG. I hate them so much. Well, you know, guys, it's sounding like there's a lot of people that have a lot of internal issues. <laughs> Can I read this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just knew this podcast, because I've never read this. I just knew the podcast would be dedicated to tearing that down Nate. He lives in their heads <laughs> rent free. 100 100- Bro, we've been bringing Nate up on this podcast. And also, we live in your head rent-free, loser. Yeah. <laughs> Nate came on the podcast yeah. to shake hands with us. What idiots. That's hilarious. But that must have been made before they saw that Nate was coming on. Yeah. That's another thing that these people need to realise. <clears throat> You've seen a highly edited show that's told you the narrative it wants to tell you and shown you what to think about us. But you need to think with Nate, Kale, Georgia, Tyra, Sav, all these uphold, uh, like, what would you call them? Upright citizens on the show. They wouldn't be affiliating with us if we were all these nasty things. Exactly. And crying when we left. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't, they wouldn't talk to us if we were actually these horrible people that the show made us out to be. So I think some people need to actually recalibrate their hemispheres and kind of get in tune with what's going on around them. Exactly. Because it's a TV show and they saw everything. They know who we are better than you guys. Sorry to say it. And they're our friends. So put that in your pipe and smoke. They're choosing to hang out <laughs> with us in their free time. Put that in your pipe and Just smoke Just like you're it. choosing to write about us in Before your free time. Before he puts something in his pipe <laughs> and smokes it. So here is a photo of Trent that someone has texted their friend and it says, my sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this? Can you show me that? <laughs> <laughs> Top comment is, he looks like a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Can you see the resemblance? The resemblance is uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a thumb. I always see people comment that on random people's photos. Yeah. What does that even mean? I don't is know, that like a is I've made love to many a thumb, so <laughs> it's actually not a, it's actually not an insult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really inappropriate, man. These kids at home. Thumbs are very important <laughs> part of the human body, so thank you. Trent looks like an alligator. Long face with beady eyes. When I first saw him, I thought, are they joking? <laughs> they cast him. And now I'm like, ooh, why did they cast him? His personality makes him that much worse. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is wonderful. The beady eyes and the long face. Didn't what George that say mean? that my eyes were like looking into a green galaxy? A brown galaxy? Nah, it was green. Are your eyes green? Hell yeah. No, they're not. Well, they are. Why are you lying on camera, man? <laughs> I'm pretty sure these are 4K. All right, here's another good post. And this has gained some traction by the seams, by the light, the looks. Zach is ruining this for me, is the title. 
I'm really enjoying season five, but then every time Zach comes on the screen, I want to turn the TV off and stop watching. He is so off-putting. He is ruining the show for me. The way he talks about people is disgusting. The way you talk about me is disgusting, <laughs> all right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I find funny. Like, so these people are having a go at us for saying these type of things, which we didn't even say things that bad. And then... Like they're labeling us all these things that they're doing themselves. They're saying way worse stuff. Yeah, we never made criticism. This is the biggest on hypocritical on the show. I've ever read. It's crazy, but it's kind of funny. Are they writing these from a mental asylum? <laughs> 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 Who gave you guys Wi-Fi in there? I don't. Where do they even post this stuff? What even is this? All right, so, dude, I'm on episode four, and I don't even know if I can actually watch this entire season. Please tell me. Good thing it's your choice to turn it off. It's out as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, watch another show, so buddy. These people are acting like they're held against their will to watch this show. Yeah. I can't stand him. And he's a despicable human being that has no problem lying and acting like a scumbag to other people to get what he wants. This behavior is a turnoff. I'm seriously debating watching the rest of the season. I'm on episode four and he's such <laughs> a creep. He looks like a walking Funko Pop with his big ass head. I can't believe that Lucinda is so blind to see what he's doing. And if you ask me, Nate is 10 times hotter than him and he's actually a decent human being. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? I'm a walking Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I don't know what that is, but maybe you're right. And I do have a massive head. I, I would say my head is probably in the top like 25% of heads in the world, head size wise. As in... It's big. I've got a big head. Yeah. Metaphorically as well. Yeah. I think a lot of myself. And you should, man. Hey, I deserve it. After reading this, <laughs> it's the least I could do for my mental health. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, seriously, I don't know what a Funko Pop is, but sounds better than thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how Zach is turning around the movie night to make himself look like the victim. He's such a narcissistic creep. <laughs> guys that's right i actually yeah that was an interesting night for trent and i we went through the the wars on that night but you know the one thing i think when you whenever you're in a confrontation is you just need to back yourself and that's what we were doing yeah and you've got to because no one else was <laughs> blame george said that it's just a tv show and he's damn right <laughs> He said what? It's just a TV show, guys. Guys. Finally, someone in this thread with a bit of common sense. Logic always prevails. At the end of the day, beyond the veil, logic will find its way into Solomon's temple. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> Someone's called you a bobble ass head. <laughs> a what? I can kind of see it. A bobble head. Yeah. See, the big head comments, I've got some ground. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's see, they're probably the only comments that we can... Give a bit of, you know, credit for. You know, I actually think if we were to line up a hundred heads, mine... I'd still choose yours if I that's don't a question. Think people would, I don't <laughs> think mine would be like the biggest though, you know? Yeah. Like maybe 25, like I said, top 25. But even then, I don't think it's that big. It's just because I'm a large human being. I'm 98 kilos of pure muscle. <laughs> You were Come on, you have to run around, aggression. You have to run around the shell to get <laughs> wet, mate. You're not that kilos. big. Narcissism. <laughs> I'm 98 kilos of love. Come on, let's just call it how it is. I'm a loving and caring individual. Trent and I have had actually a very interesting week this week. Um, have we? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done this week, Zach? Sorry, last week we had a very interesting week. What were we up to last we week? We went to Frit again. Yeah. And that was Trent's first ever time getting a backstage pass to a concert. Acquired illegally. <laughs> Not illegally. The fun way. Yeah, the fun way. So essentially, we went into Fred again and we were provided with Trent and Zach show backstage passes. By Zach. <laughs> <laughs> I made them. <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. And we got to watch a phenomenal show sober on a tuesday night it was so good it was so good it wasn't was so it so fun so basically um we've we've filmed a youtube video for it but we made our own backstage passes 
and it worked. And they, they looked so good. We went straight through security. No one batted an eye. <laughs> and the thing is, I've done this many, many, many times. So back in New Zealand, the first show I ever went to was called the little band called Drax Project. And they were an up-and-coming band. And my friend is the drummer. Well, my friend's friend. And then I think he just wanted to prove a point that he could sneak in. So he snuck in. Yeah. And then he's like, we've got something here. We could do this to, for actual artists. Hell yeah. And I think the the one I went to with him was called ASAP Ferg. We went to ASAP Ferg. I remember ASAP No, Ferg. it was Schoolboy Q. Sorry. It was Schoolboy Q. That was cool. So we went into Schoolboy Q and then we're like, this is so dope. We just made like a backstage pass and then... We started making more for every artist that came into the city. And then every time like a bigger artist came and it was a bigger venue, it was more of a thrill. But I'd Hell say yeah. the Freddie Ginn concert, like the Rod Laver, that's a pretty good, you know, that's the great sneak right there. That's, that's why, especially for my first time. <laughs> we're, and we're I was very skeptical, one. but Zach was like, you were confident the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of like, I'm like, if someone's that confident and they honestly believe it, that they're going to get in. Like, it's going to happen. Cause you, you, didn't, need... you didn't think it was going to happen, though. I had my, yeah, I had my <laughs> doubts. I was just, like, walking, like, two steps behind Zach. Um, and he got waved straight in. And then, but we wore him under our shirt. And we yeah. just flashed him to Did Grandpa you... on the door. Because I got held up because I had a camera. And they said, you're not allowed to bring a yeah. camera in here. Did that freak you out? No, nah, no, nah, because I knew it was about the camera. Yeah, oh, did you? Damn, I was, I was pretty nervous be able to hear at this stage already, though. Were you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get nervous leading into the walk up to the security when i'm at the security i'm like we're good you yeah know, when i'm talking to people yeah but it's like when i'm not talking to people that's when i get in my own head because you can like always you're always talking <laughs> you can talk your way out of a lot of situations you if you're you know diligent with your words but that's why i went up to that security guard when we first got in and i said hey man where does the staff entrance where's the staff entrance yeah because then i just needed to kind of humanize the experience because <laughs> when you when it's people that you're chatting with it doesn't seem as scary and daunting but when you're thinking oh security big stadium big artist like you know punishment if i get caught it's not as what, what is a punishment do you actually know i think it depends on what you do so i think if you're being fraudulent so if we went in there and we were to say we work for this company that we didn't work for i think you can get done for fraud yeah. But because we went in there and we said we're working for ourselves, <laughs> I don't think we can get done for fraud. <laughs> I just think, <laughs> I'm not a lawyer though. <laughs> but, but, but we, um, yeah, I think, I think the biggest punishment we could probably get is probably just a ban from the arena. Yeah. So I'm not going to give someone jail time. That'd be great. Ban from the, you know, the, the main arena in Melbourne. You know, that wouldn't be the first place that <laughs> might have threatened to ban us. Oh, <laughs> this is a huge one, guys. This is hilarious. So, it is now, but it was not at the time. At the time, Trent was like, you are the biggest moron I've ever it been in my so entire life. It was so embarrassing at the time. But with the context, I don't think what I've done was the cardinal sin. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> fashion week is quite a big deal. For this, some. <laughs> for some in Melbourne and Australia. Yeah. For us personally, we've never been to a Fashion Week show. And it's not something that... It's a cool thing to go and attend to, but it's not something that we're majorly into. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm a fashionista. Yeah. Fashion connoisseur. I wouldn't say I'm a Jean-Paul Gaultier, a Ralph Lauren. <laughs> a Ralph not Lauren. A Louis Vuitton. Cookie. <laughs> is, that, is that one I of don't, them? I don't want to go to Fashion Week and... Patty, <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Halfiger or whatever yeah, it is, Tommy, <laughs> whatever that stupid Bill figure, <laughs> Bill and Thiago, <laughs> <laughs> you know all the main ones. Yeah, but um, we got invited to a fashion event, and we were like, and that was sweet. that was where they went wrong. <laughs> yeah, we were like, cool <laughs> guys, future fashion weeks probably don't invite us. Yeah, maybe not the best idea from them because going into the event, I thought. This is a great opportunity to video what it's like in a fashion week in yeah. Melbourne. And we went into the lobby and then I just, I was videoing and I just said, hey, we're here for fashion, the fashion show. And they said, sweet, just go up to level one. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they don't need to check our tickets or anything. And then we walked to the left and I was like, damn, the security sucks. And then I was like, 
Good thing they didn't check for the C4 strapped to you, Johnson. As a joke to Trent. And I was so where Zach was facing the elevator and then the foyer was behind him. And I'm facing my back's against the elevator, but I'm looking over past Zach into the foyer. So I can see this security standing like maybe two, three meters behind him. And I'm just like, that is not what you joke about in front of security. No, but but Zach no didn't know she was, was there. there. So like it's a funny joke with your mates, but yeah. like in a foyer in front of security. Oh man. And then we we completely forgot about this. We didn't think any more of it. Like it was did, a dumb we, it joke. Didn't, it didn't even cross our minds again. We're like, we were already running late. They were holding up this event for us. And I was videoing the whole time, which and is then important for later. We got the, the elevator and she's in there with us, this security lady. Mm. And that's all good. Like she didn't even say Bo Peep to us. Yeah. Maybe she was scared <laughs> for her life. It makes sense now. And then we get walked straight through the change room and sat front row at this fashion week show next to who invited us, who we won't name for obvious reasons. <laughs> we'll protect <laughs> <And> our identity. <laughs> and then how long would you say it was, Zach? 20 minutes? I'd say we were in there for 20 minutes. Yeah. Before, so then the show's on and the security comes up right next to the DJ and he's like, you two come with me. And I was thinking, are we being pranked right now? Yeah, but we're looking around like, do we go or like? We're, we're, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're, the runway's happening. We're in the front. We yeah, we're going to be walking up. It's a big event for these and people, they, especially where, the designers. Yeah, and where we were sitting was like where they do the big turn in front mm. of the DJ. It's like the main, the main little area. So all the eyes were on us. They yeah. were already on us because we walked in late when everyone was seated. Yeah. So then, <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess he wants us now. But I, I was like, I thought that the venue or some of the organisers wanted us to play a prank or something. Yeah, that's what I thought was going down. So I'm like... Us being Delulu. Yeah. <laughs> Delulu yeah. is a Salulu. The big head <laughs> comes back into play. So we get up and we go. And I'm like, here we go. Like, what is it you want? It's a big moment. And then he's... <laughs> you think it's funny joking about having They're a like, bomb? He didn't know it was a joke. He goes, you have a... He was going off. Yeah? He he, I, I remember him swearing. Yeah. And saying, you effing think it's a joke? And I was like... And I, I knew that you could hear him on the runway because he was yelling yeah. that loudly. So I said to him, calm down, man. Just shh, shh. <laughs> like, let's talk about this. <laughs> and then he's like, he was yelling and screaming. It's like, you think the security sucks? And we're like, pipe down. Yeah, man. we're like, please be quiet. Settle. Please or be the C4 will detonate. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, you, you have a bomb? You have a bomb? I'm like, no, man. We don't have a bomb. Yeah. I was like, we've recorded the whole thing. We don't have it. And he's like, give me your IDs. I'm like, all right. Happily. And, and then he's like, hey, 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 <laughs> you know, he wasn't happy. And then anyway, he takes our IDs and says, you can go sit back down. And we'd bought out the guy who had invited us to yeah. have the conversation. And he was batting for the Yeah, he was like, these guys hard. are obviously joking, man. Like, you don't actually think, you know, they've got a bomb. Yeah. We sat back down. We continued watching the show. Then about 30 minutes later, he came back up with four of his croonies. What do you call them? Cronies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he came Who with were backup. about four foot nothing. He came with backup. <laughs> and then I was like, oh no. And I could see and they him. they space themselves out. Yeah. I could see him across the room, like just, waiting for his yeah. moment. And I was just like. I think he was good. thinking this was his big break. No, it wasn't though. Because it was all an ego thing. Because then he came back yeah, and called but... out the guy who invited us over. They spoke for 10 minutes and the guy came back. He's like, look, man, you know, he's just not backing down. I've told him it's a joke. Yeah. He knows it's a joke, whatever. They wanted to call the cops and get the cops involved. So then he came and got us one more time and I was like, let's just go now. No, no, sorry. He was waiting for us. And I was like, let's just go now. Yeah. Then we left with him and we were sat outside probably an hour. Yeah. While the show was running. They wanted to sweep the event with They police. were saying, we're going to have to shut down the event and sweep the event. And I said, listen... It was a terrible joke that I made. I have it on video. I have us walking in, walking to our seats, right up until you grabbed us. Yeah. All on video. Thank goodness. And I was like, we've got everything. We didn't go around planting freaking bombs. And the joke was that it was strapped to his Johnson. Johnson. So I was like, pat him down if you actually think we've got one. Yeah. They didn't want to pat have you a down. feel of it, champion. They didn't want to touch you. Finally. I'm not surprised. <laughs> 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 brilliant it looks like our producer has just sent us through a couple more comments that i've found that are fresh fresh off the block i cannot believe that zach and trent are that popular to have a podcast 
<laughs> in fact, I cannot believe they have any guests. Nate, why are you there? <laughs> <laughs> and that just goes to show what we were talking about before. Nate was there because we get along. Nate was there because we're his friend. Yeah. It's not, it's not what the TV show made it out to be. Guys, just imagine we're characters on the show. I was we're not <laughs> taking any accountability. <laughs> <laughs> I was creeping after Nate posted them, and it's like top 50 in Australia. It actually got down to top 20, thanks, sweetheart. Yeah, we did pretty well. Really, that is nuts. I just don't get it. What's there not to get? I don't think they are popular enough to sustain it. Once they run out of Love Island drama... They really have nothing going for them. I'd give it six months. <laughs> hey, I was giving it a month, so thanks. <laughs> thanks so much. Hey, Literally one, perf. One down, five <laughs> more to go. <laughs> no, but I think that's a very good point, Trent, because outside of Love Island, you are fairly talentless. Yeah, says a guy that's unemployed and in between lives on his brother's couch. Hey, <laughs> in between opportunities. <laughs> and he's a distant relative, okay? <laughs> hey, look, Zach, I'm on what you sleep on every night <laughs> actually the texture is probably a bit more like this one <laughs> it's leather yeah. i've been there i've been to your brother's apartment <laughs> so thanks guys thanks for these like keep them coming we appreciate it yeah to be fair i just yeah i'm really grateful for the viewers back home <laughs> and but the people that we actually really love are the ones that are sending us real nice oh, messages yeah, to the absolutely. trend and zach show and like and our personal dms and zach and i were talking the other day when we go down the street and someone says we're um, Bambi the other night mm. and this girl comes up and she's like oh, I love your podcast when yeah. you next to like that is the best to hear that is the best that is the best and like that fills our loins the loins feel soothed when yeah. someone says something along those lines and like the positive feedback we get just yeah. far outweighs the negative it's kind of crazy wait there is a negative yeah <laughs> it's kind of crazy that there's so much out there that like we're just so not aware of yeah we do live in a bubble a bit but like like I said, I love that they're talking about us. Um, if you've got nothing better to do, keep doing it, please, because <laughs> we're loving it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but th those of you that are supportive and nice, thank you so much. We've got a really exciting guest coming on next episode. And yeah, we're just really grateful for you guys listening. See you cowards next week. Hey, stay cowardly. <laughs> <laughs>